This picture from page 149 in your textbook shows a reaction mechanism for what's well shown at the top. The overall reaction is turning the tertiary butyl alcohol into the corresponding tertiary butyl chloride. And that overall equation tells us what we start with, what we add to the pot, so to speak, and what chemical products come out of that. But it doesn't all happen in one step. There's really these three elementary steps that comprise this mechanism. And it's worth studying this to see what's being shown in each of these. Because what's happening here for tertiary butyl alcohol will happen for any tertiary alcohol and pretty much will happen for any secondary alcohol. Uh, primary, al primary alcohols do something a little bit different. We'll talk about those in a minute. But the reason why we need the hydrogen from the hydrogen chloride here is because that hydrogen can be transferred over to the alcohol. Uh, and that's what that first step is showing. A pair of electrons from this oxygen forms a bond to this hydrogen. And as that happens, that hydrogen uh, ceases to be connected to the chlorine. So one bond forms as the other bond breaks. And here's the uh, product of that first step. This is a reversible equilibrium does go in both directions but typically we can get a reasonable amount of product out of this reaction and saying that it happens fast means that for any alcohol this is not going to be a step that we have to worry about taking too much time. The reason for this is because once we have that second hydrogen on this oxygen that becomes the reactant in step two and this is showing that carbon oxygen bond breaking so that water can be our leaving group. And in chemistry, uh, when you cause bonds to break, you want the products to be stable. Uh, and we've got to break this carbon-oxygen bond if we're going to turn this into an alkyl chloride. And carbon-oxygen bonds are pretty strong. However, if what leaves is not just the OH, but rather a complete water molecule, that becomes much more feasible. And when that bond breaks, we temporarily have a positive charge on that carbon. It's only going to have the bonds to these three methyl groups. It doesn't obey the octet rule at this point, which is why it has that positive charge. And you could calculate its formal charge to verify that. This thing is called a carbocation, and it oftentimes will form along the way towards making not only alkyl halides, but a variety of different chemical products. And such cations are oftentimes going to form if the alcohol is tertiary and often if it's secondary but not if it's primary so again primary alcohols have to do something different uh, so this carbocation is, is not very stable but if we can make it form then we can lead to step three which again is a very fast step because if that carbocation finds our chloride floating around and remember this chloride was generated up here in step one, then that forms a quick bond to that carbon, reestablishes the octet rule, and makes a new chemical product. And the net effect is that we've got the chlorine in place of that OH group. The second step is oftentimes the focus. It's called the rate determining step. It's the bottleneck, if you will, because the first step and the third step are very fast. It's step two that's the key. So the faster we can get this carbocation to form, the faster we can make this overall reaction work. And that's really why different alcohols react at different rates, because they will have different tendencies to make stable carbocations. The other steps, again, go very quickly. This next slide shows the same mechanism in a slightly different way. We've seen potential energy diagrams before, uh, back in the third chapter. And here's one describing this overall reaction. 